Hi, this is Aaron and Linda with Traveling Flamingo, and today we're going to talk about Toledo, which is a restaurant on top of the Grand Destino Tower, which is in the new tower just built at Coronado Springs Resort. This is a Spanish tapas steak and seafood restaurant, and it's on the top floor, and it has a beautiful view of uh, Hollywood Studios and Epcot, and we're going to tell you what we thought of it, what we didn't like about it, all that coming right up. So we're going to start off with atmosphere and theming. And as you can hear, I've lost my voice a bit. It was a busy week with coaching. So I'm going to let Aaron do uh, most of the talking today. But inside, we thought it was absolutely beautiful. The floor to ceiling windows lets in a lot of natural light and gives you an opportunity to enjoy the great views. There are two olive trees in the middle. They use a lot of earthy colors, um, which just gives it a real nice feeling in there. In the evening, if you get a chance to go, it's beautiful. The, the colors, the lights, the twinkling lights they use was really nice. And it is rooftop dining with a view of the Epcot and resort area. So there is a main dining room, but they also have the Dahalia Lounge. I'm not sure if I'm saying that right. You can correct me in the comments, which also has indoor and outdoor seating. So it's nice if you go up a little bit early and you want to have a drink in the lounge or go and look outside and, and sit outside because there are some really nice views from up there. So this is located at the Grand Destino Tower, which is at Coronado Springs. Coronado Springs is in the Epcot Resort area. So it's there by Epcot and by Hollywood Studios. And it's the new tower that they had just built. Fairly large, pretty big for conventions as Coronado Springs always has been. Odds are you're probably not going to go here specifically for a meal unless you're at the hotel. However, you can get to it by a minivan or a bus from the parks or ticket and transportation center. A lot of people will equate this to the other uh, restaurant that's at the top of a tower, uh, um, the Contemporary Resort, the California Grill. However, I think the California Grill, you're probably more likely to go from a resort just because it is on the monorail loop and it's easier to get to. However, this isn't quite as easy to get to, but you know, if you're staying at the resort, it's great. If you're staying near the resort, it's great. And of course you could take a minivan or a bus if you're interested in going here. So you have two different menus uh, when you go here. Uh, you have a tapas menu, which is, if, if you've not done tapas, it's a Spanish way of eating where you have small sort of appetizer plates that you share. Everybody can order different things. They're fairly inexpensive and you kind of pool together a bunch of small, small plates and you eat, which is great. There's a food menu in case you want something larger. And some of these are obviously shareable as well. And they also have uh, cheese and charcuterie as well. So this place is known for tapas. They have a uh, very well known for their charcuterie and cheeses and as we said there's two menus you have a food menu and you have a tapas menu and the tapas menu is small bites and the food menu is kind of like a plate of food the entree prices range from about 34 to 89 dollars so when you open up the tapas menu it's broken up into three different categories you have the pinchos uh, those are from the basque region of spain and they're very small they're like three dollars uh, per item and it's small toothpick food uh, and then they also have the cazuela section. The cazuela section of the menu is uh, a little bit different. These are slightly bigger, and these are from the Spanish, they're served in Spanish terracotta dishes, uh, and they are sort of a traditional presentation, and they're a bit bigger. They're about eight, uh, 10 to $18, depending on what you get. And then lastly, in the menu, you have the house boards, which is the cheese boards and the charcuteries. Then the actual menu is presented like any other menu where you have appetizers, entrees, and then there's desserts. So that's like you would get anywhere else. You can order an appetizer, and this is more for like the single serving for yourself or for a few people around you. We, you, we mix and matched between the tapas and the appetizers here. Uh, we didn't really get any entrees. I don't think we felt like a full meal. This was after we had just gotten back from Hollywood Studios, so we didn't feel like we wanted too much. So we did also want to get a dessert. Unfortunately, the dessert that Linda wanted was sold out. Uh, she was very disappointed about that. This was sort of the last uh, last serving, uh, last seating of the day. So I guess it makes sense. However, it's not often that you kind of run out of stuff, but they were they run out of the dessert. So we were disappointed by that. And so we didn't actually get dessert that day. 
So I'm going to talk a little bit about what we had. I'd like to start off with a blanket statement saying I don't speak Spanish. We're from Canada and our second language is French, which I really don't speak that well either. So um, that's not going to help me too much. But we ordered a uh, hibiscus mint lemonade, lemonada, which is $5.49. It was really nice and refreshing. Lemonade, hibiscus, grenadine, mint, and soda water. And I would definitely get that again. So for some of the tapas we got, we got a piquillo peppers, and that's $12. It comes with three little bell peppers stuffed with herb, goat cheese, and lemon. They were very nice. All of us enjoyed those. We had the Bravos potatoes. Those are $8. It's actually a side. They're roasted potatoes with herbs. They were pretty good. Then we had the traditional tortilla española, which is a potato cake wrapped in thinly sliced cured ham with olive relish on top. It was, those were $3. That was amazing. That was definitely one of my favorites and I could have I would have ordered more of those instead of the Bravo potatoes personally, but I don't know if everybody uh Aaron maybe will tell you if he felt differently. We also had the tronchon cheese, which was $10. It's a it's the tronchon cheese on a thinly sliced bread with honey and lavender. It was amazing. It's $10. That was so good. I would definitely get that if we went back as well. Another drink we had is the Ponches de Frutas. It's $4.99. It's a Duela pomegranate lemonade, sweet and sour pineapple, blackberry, and soda water. And that was very nice as well. So in total, it was $50 included in taxes. Uh, however, we do have an annual pass discount, which was $5.25 or 10%. So it's quite a bit of food for the three of us to share for only $50. So for us, the tapas was a great way to go to get to try a variety of things. Yeah, I really enjoyed the Bravis potatoes and I enjoyed the cheese as I always enjoy cheese. Uh, the presentation was really neat. They had this sort of flattened out wine glass, which was pretty cool. They also had a bunch of sort of terracotta, um, terracotta pottery that they'd serve it in, which was really neat. Again, the total cost for us was $50 American. We thought it was a good value. We got a lot of little little appetizers. We felt pretty full. We really wanted tapas. If you listen to the in-room reel that goes on about Disney Springs, they tell you about Paradiso 57. And two times we went to Paradiso 57, which they say is tapas. It is not tapas. This is tapas. Uh, so if Paradiso 57 is still there, I know they're thinking of getting rid of it, but it's still there when you when you watch this. Don't go there. It's not tapas. Do not listen to what they say in the room. You can take your tapas to a whole new level at Paradiso 37. Paradiso 37 is the so overall, this was a, a great restaurant. Good food. We enjoyed it. It was, you know, it was, I think, authentic enough without being overly authentic. The food was really, really good. They do say that you can see the fireworks. Uh, it is a side view of the parks and they don't pipe in the music. So you can see the fireworks and it's a it's a great view of, of the, the of the parks. I don't think it's the greatest, but it was kind of neat and we enjoyed it and it's a different perspective on them and it's good food. Uh, we were a bit disappointed that they ran out of the dessert. Uh, more specifically, Linda was disappointed that they ran out of the dessert. Uh, however, you know, that stuff does happen. I assume that's a one-off, but if you've had similar experiences, let us know in the comments. And we would definitely go back if we're staying here again. I don't think we'd really go back if we weren't staying at the hotel, uh, but we would definitely go back we would go back if we were at the hotel for sure. A lot of people will say it's comparable to the California Grill and there is similar, like they do have the fireworks experience and it is upstairs and you can walk out to this nice open area. They've got a nice big lounge there. So there's some aspects that remind me of California Grill, but I wouldn't say it's comparable to California Grill. You know, California Grill is a very different and, you know, very different experience. This was upscale-ish, you know, you didn't feel as though this was a Denny's, this was, you know, a, a nice restaurant, great selection, great food. However, you don't quite have the fireworks like you do at California Grill. I didn't find the food was quite as uh, on point as California Grill, but all in all, this was really good. I wouldn't suggest going here for fireworks, but I would suggest going here on your next trip to Disney. If you are interested in learning more about California Grill, we have a restaurant review of that and we will put a link in the in the description below and we will put a card hopefully in the video that you can click on. 
I agree with Erin. I think that if you're staying at Coronado Springs, I would hands down make a reservation for this restaurant. It's really nice. It's beautiful. Nice experience if you get to get to enjoy it. Also, if you're staying in the area and, and you're looking for rooftop dining, this is a nice option for that with the great views. However, I won't be going out of my way if I'm staying more in the Magic Kingdom area to go there. So we also wanted to take a few seconds and mention a few comments we got on our Pizza Rizzo Hollywood Studios uh, restaurant review. If you're interested in that, we will add a link and a card above. We know we don't get as many viewers on our Disney stuff. However, we enjoy going and we like talking about it. So thank you, Fox. I definitely liked your comment. Uh, I'll never get over how much money they wasted building this but couldn't take the time to produce any decent food, which I think is a very, very valid comment. And to P. G, who also said the pizza looks like an insult, but I'm from Chicago, so I could be biased. I don't necessarily think that you're biased from that. As we said in the video, the pizza was good. It was not great. Uh, it's probably not the worst pizza you've ever eaten. However, it's not the best pizza you've ever eaten. So thank you for those comments. Thanks so much for watching our video. We really hope that you liked it. If you do like it, we would really appreciate it if you could give it a share. We don't really get as many views on our Disney content as we do some of our cruising stuff, so we'd really appreciate that. So thanks again for watching and happy travels.